Kings chapter 18, beginning at verse 41. This is right after Elijah has called down fire from heaven. So we, we, know, we know that story very well. But I want you to understand something that happened right before that. If you look at seven, uh, 1 Kings 17 and 1, it says that Elijah told King Ahab, because of you going against the Spirit of God, because you continue to provoke God, because you are operating in sin, he says, I'm going to call a famine on the land and there will be no more rain until I say it is. Then we get to verse 41 in 1 Kings 18, and it reads, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now and look towards the sea. So now Elijah is trying to call the rain back now that he has performed, and God has sent fire down from heaven and destroyed the prophets of Baal. Elijah is now calling the famine off and calling the rain back. So he puts his face between his knees, and he prays, and he sends his servant up he says look towards the sea and the servant says I don't see anything nothing's happening and then it goes on it says and he looked and there was nothing and he said go again seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time that he went and he said behold there arise a little cloud out of the sea about the size of a man's hand how many of you know that's, that's not much for rain? But, but at least I got a cloud. I got something. There's a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. But that's all it took for Elijah's faith to kick in. And then he spoke. And he says, that's all I need. And he said, go up and tell Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain does not stop you. And verse 45, it says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens were black with clouds and and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So let me recap what's happening. In the beginning of chapter 17, Elijah said, there's not going to be any rain until I say it is. Then we have different stories in the Bible that we're familiar with. There's the widow woman, the woman who ran out of food. She didn't know what to do, but she had faith in God. She made the prophet a cake first, and God supplied her needs, letting us know that even when God puts the land through famine, we are tapped into a different economy, and our needs are still going to be supplied. Then there was the, um, the showdown with, of Baal with the prophets of Baal, and God called fire down from heaven to show that he is God. The Bible says God is looking to and fro the earth, looking for a ways to show his glory and his power in you. And if you can simply honor and sh uh, show in faith the power of God and speak what he says, God says, I will manifest my glory in you. And so after God sends fire down from heaven, proving that he is the real God, then the evil prophets are destroyed. And then Elijah says, now I'm going to send the rain back. But he goes and prays and nothing happens. So he prays seven times. And on that seventh time, uh, his servant comes back and says, I see a little cloud. The size of a man's hand. What is a cloud the size of a man's hand supposed to do for us when we're looking for rain and we've been in famine? But he, Elijah understood that just the little spark that God is manifesting is enough for me to know that my faith in him shall deliver that which I speak. And so then he spoke and he said, now go before the rain overtakes you. And it says Ahab got on his chariot and before Ahab could get even out of the city, the rains were black, the clouds were black and rain hit them. And then look, one of the funniest verses in the Bible is next. It says, and Elijah, the Lord was on Elijah. I told you God's power was looking to and fro the earth to show his power in you. 
It says, then Elijah girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jehah. In other words, God gave Elijah some super speed. He even went past the chariots <laughs> to display his power <laughs> that he had spoken rain. <laughs> the flash. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the cloud the size of a man's hand is all it took. But then God says, give me a sound and I can manifest my glory from the spirit to the natural. Let me break this down for you. Even in the natural, if you go to uh, math, uh, Mark chapter 11, starting at verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Now it's Jesus speaking, and he's speaking on a very similar subject. Mark 11 and 22, and it reads, and Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. He goes on and says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he, what? Said. They shall, somebody say shall, come to pass. And then it goes on and says, and he shall have whatever he says. Did he put a limit on that? Or did he say, you shall have whatever you, but it started by saying, have faith in God. So we can go to the faith chapter of the Bible, uh, Hebrews 11, and we can see what faith is. It begins with Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, hope is in the invisible. But then it goes on, it says, but the evidence of things not seen. Evidence is something you do in the physical. So you have to show evidence of something that you do not see. I'm going somewhere with this. Work with me. Uh, you have to show evidence of what you're hoping for, and God will manifest it in the physical. If you go to Hebrews 11 and 3, it says that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That things that appear were created by things that do not appear. What that simply means is the things that do not appear, the things that you cannot see, are stronger than the things that you can see. But you manifest the things that you cannot see into the things that you can see by word, by speaking. Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. That's in the spirit. But then he he said, go, and it manifested in the physical. There was a way to pull the spiritual into the physical, and it was based on sound. It is based on your word. Even in the physical, God gave us ways to see this even in the physical. Did you know that if a plane breaks the sound barrier, you know we have planes that can go faster than the speed of sound now, right? They, they call them Mach, Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3. Those Machs are based on how fast the plane is relative to the speed of sound. And if a plane goes more than 770 miles per hour, which we have planes that can go far faster than that now, there is actually a physical manifestation. Do I have any military people here that can talk to me about this? There is a physical manifestation where for a moment when it breaks the sound barrier, you can physically see the sound. Once it hits that point, that barrier, there is, it looks like a cloud. You can look it up on Google. When it breaks, it actually physically manifests where you can see where sound was now manifested into sight. God is saying all you have to do is when you hear me speak, once you speak what I speak, it will break the reality barrier and you will see a physical manifestation. But do I have enough faith in you? Do you have enough faith in me to speak what I speak and you will see the results? A lot of us aren't seeing results because we aren't speaking what God spoke. Hebrews 4, verse 12, we know this very well. It says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Where the word two-edged there is actually diastomus in the Greek. Diastomus. Di meaning two. Stomus meaning mouth. Meaning two mouths are speaking. You hear God speak and then you speak. If you hear God speak and you speak what God speaks, then it manifests into the physical. 
But until we get the sound of God and the faith of God, we are continuing to be subject to the things of this world. When God says this world was framed by the things that you cannot see, meaning if you concentrate more on what you can't see, you'll manifest more in what you can see. Why are we spending so much time learning the laws of this world when God says, I can break the laws of this world? I created the laws of this world based on what I spoke. And if you speak what I speak, the laws of this world will bend to my reality, not yours. God operates under a different plane. God operates in the spirit above the physical, the spirit above the physical. He showed us this from the first creation in Genesis chapter 1. It says and the first thing that he did was he created light. He says he created light and he separated light from darkness. But let me explain to you that this was a spiritual that was manifest in the physical because he did that on day one, but he did not create the sun, moon, and stars until day four. So what was the light? <laughs> it was spiritual, and he spoke it into existence, and it manifested into the physical. God says that's how our life is supposed to be. When you hear what I say, you're blessed. You're going to hear me tell you you're blessed right when you're in your darkest trial, right when you're in your worst hour, right when everything seems defeated. And I'm going to be the one to tell you, I said you're the head and not the tail. And when you speak what God spoke, it will manifest in the physical. God is waiting to show himself mighty, but he's looking for someone that will put faith with sound. Even Moses had to do this. When Moses was went up against Egypt and the pharaohs of Egypt, do you know, God, it wasn't just 10 random plagues that God chose. He actually chose a plague specific to different Egyptian deities. Every god that Egypt served is exactly what God was destroying. They had a sun god named Ra. So God said, I'm going to put the sun out. I'm only going to leave it in my children. They had a Nile River God and a crocodile God. So God says, I'm going to put blood in the water just to show you that I am greater. God says, every time the enemy comes against you, all you have to do is speak what I told you. Speak that what you see in these scriptures, and I will manifest it in their face, which is why God says, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. They're going to see when you eat, but I need you to speak and have faith in me and I will manifest the spiritual into the physical. I, I, I will tell you guys, I'll tell you stories of when I, I did it right. I'll tell you stories of when I messed up. And I'll tell you how God taught me based on my speech. See, he taught me things physically. He actually taught me about prophecy. Let me explain something about prophecy. Uh, first uh, Timothy 4 and 14 actually says, neglect not the gift that is in you by, that I spoke over you by prophecy and the laying on of hands. Meaning when I transmitted this gift into you, first I spoke it, then I touched you, and it transmitted onto you. Let me break down this transmission of this glory so you have an understanding of how it gets from the spiritual into the physical. God says, I use sound. I, I use different ways to conduct what it is that I want you to have. What God wants us to understand from today is that we're supposed to change our sound. Our children have heard many sounds that are not the sound of God. Our children have heard many sounds. Beyonce's album just came out just yesterday and they sampled some music from the Clark system. But the music that Beyonce was twerking to was not the sound of God. There is a sound that I'm looking for. And when I hear that sound, I will change generational curses into generational blessings and wealth. But I need a different sound. The children have heard, you ain't good enough. Or you're going to have to be just like your daddy. Or you're going to have, you have drunk genes and alcoholic genes just like it runs in your family. God says, I can alter those genes based on what you say. But you have to speak, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a lender and not a borrower. 
And when it comes out of your mouth, the sound will manifest in the physical and the world will shift before your eyes. But first, Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And then he spoke. So 1 Timothy 4, 14, it says, neglect not the gift that was placed into you by prophecy, meaning gifts that your children have, gifts that are in your generation. You can change curses into gifts based on what you say, and then you lay hands. <laughs> it said, neglect not the gift that was put in you based on what was said. You speak it into them and they get the gifts of the Spirit. They need to hear what you're saying, the sound that is coming from your life. And if you don't have somebody to speak it into, you speak it into yourself. Speak those things that are not as though they are. And our God says, I will manifest my glory in you. So God was teaching me when I was younger, I was in college, about prophecy. And I don't consider myself at all a prophet, but God can use any gift he wants to whenever it's necessary to prove that he is God. And because I had faith and was not afraid to prove who God was, God would use me to speak to different people. And so at LSU, there's a lot of athletes, and God would use me to speak to the athletes. Matter of fact, I married one of them. My, my wife was an LSU track girl. That's how I found her, speaking to the athletes. And so God had me speaking to guys that were on the football team. And if you know anything about LSU, LSU play, produces some good players. They go in the draft. I remember one guy came up to me, and he had heard so much about me being able to speak into people's lives that he actually asked me. He said, brother, can you tell me about my career? And I felt the spirit of God come on me, but in this instance, I became afraid. And faith doesn't work well with fear. I became afraid because what I heard did not sound likely at the time. So I decided to try to hedge my bet. His name was Laron Landry. He was a freshman. I don't know if he had played yet or just started, but he wasn't known well yet. But he came to me, and I spoke to him, and I felt the Spirit of God come on me, and I began to prophesy about what was going to happen in his life. I said, after your third year, you're going to want to go pro, but God said, stay one more year. He says, if you stay one more year, God's going to bless you, and the country is going to call this your defense. The whole DV was a defense. It was a safety. God the whole defense will be called your defense and I will bless you. And then I heard very clearly God say and tell him he will go top five in the draft. And I got afraid right at the last minute and I said, ah, top 15. I said, I figured I'd hedge my bets. 15 is, five is in 15. <laughs> I got scared. Well, everything that I said began to manifest. They were accustomed to seeing these things manifest, but I remember right at the end of his junior year, I had graduated. He called my cell phone. He only called my cell phone two times their entire career at LSU. One time because he was looking at my sisters and he wanted permission to talk to him. <laughs> and the other time was this time. And he says, hey brother, I remember what you said, but I cannot pass up this opportunity. I got to go in the draft now. I know it's only my junior year, but I really need to go now. But I remember what you told me. And he actually said what I was supposed to say because he heard it too, but I was still scared. He said, I remember you told me I was going to go in the top five. And he paused. <laughs> I told him, well, I remember I told you to stay one more year but it's up to you what you're going to do. I'm, I'm going to support you either way. And then God gave me an opportunity. The Spirit said, speak it, speak it, speak it. And I got scared, and I just said, whatever I said, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> he calls me back again the next day or the next week, and he says, I don't know what happened. Everything's been going wrong ever since I had that conversation with you. My leg hurting. This is going wrong. I, you know what? I'm just going to listen to God, and I'm going to stay here one more year. As soon as he announced he was coming back, the cover of Sports Illustrated said, Laron and the LSU defense will be the best defense in the nation next year. Everything that I was speaking began to manifest, but because I did not finish the speech, when the draft came, he went number six. One that I missed, 
because I did not speak. And that's when God told me prophecy isn't just knowing what's happening. It's speaking it into existence. And then God started showing me every time I wanted to execute something on the earth, I used the man and I told the man to speak. Moses speak to the rock. Elijah called fire down from heaven. He says it's not just hearing and knowing. It is speaking it into manifestation the same way I did. I spoke the world into existence and I gave you dominion to speak. He told Adam, speak. And until you speak, it does not occur. There was another time. This time I got it right. I learned my lesson. Young lady gave me a call. 11.45 at night. She's crying. Woke me up. What's going on? Grades are due at midnight. And I just want to let you know I'm getting kicked out of school. I said, what's going on? She says, I'm already on probation. I don't have the grades to get through. She says, I needed a B, as in boy, on this one particular test in order for me to get to the next level, in order for me to stay in school. And the grade just came in, and it's a D, as in dog. I said, okay. And something told me, well, at least ask her if anything hasn't posted yet. She only got 15 minutes. I said, are there any other grades that haven't posted yet? She said, yes, but that doesn't matter because... That I already know that I got or did horrible in that class. I had a C going into the class, and I did not study for the exam. And I took the exam, and I know I failed it. So therefore, there's no way that's going up to a B. I'm getting kicked out of school. And God reminded me that a year prior to this, I had spoken to this young lady about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Young people, listen to me because this is very important. Understanding the filling of the Holy Spirit, and she had gotten her heavenly language a year prior to this. And I said, Do you remember? remember the heavenly language that God gave you. Now I'm sleeping. All I'm trying to do is go back to sleep, but the spirit won't let me let it go. I said, do you remember? She said, yes, but what does that have to do with anything? I just told you I'm being kicked out of school. I'm calling you pretty much for comfort. I said, but there's a grade that's not posted. She said, yes, but that grade's going to be a bad grade. And what she said is not what I heard. What I heard was what Elijah heard when he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And when I asked her again in his own only 10 minutes left before it's due and it's still not posted. That was all it took for me to know that's a cloud the size of a man's hand. And so I told her, you need to hang up now because all you got is nine minutes left. And you need to go into that language and speak that sound that you learned about a year ago. And then call me back and tell me what happened. It wasn't but five minutes later she called me back, still crying, but this time it was tears of joy. I said, what happened? She says, I don't know what happened, but as soon as I opened in my mouth and the sound came out. My phone rang. It was a teacher. I didn't know this teacher had my phone number. I didn't even know they knew me. And the teacher said, I'm calling you because I was posting your grade. By the way, you got a D as in dog. But every time I go to post it, something keeps stopping me. And I can't figure out what it is. I don't know you and I don't know what you need. But just in case you need this, I'm going to give you a B. And it manifested after there was faith and sound. God says, I will manifest the spirit into reality when you connect your faith with sound. There is a conduct, a way that it conducts into the natural, but you have to believe and say something. Jesus didn't say, just pray to me. He said, have faith in God, and then you speak to the mountain, and whatever you say will happen. Elijah said it won't rain until I say it will. We have authority, but we exercise our authority with sound. If you don't know what to say, get filled with the Holy Spirit and just speak. God will speak for you. There is a sound that God wants to hear. One of the craziest testimonies I've had more recently happened in my office. There was a homeless woman that wandered her way into my office. I own a state farm agency. And my state farm agency is on the good side of town, so I've never seen anybody homeless anywhere on this side of town. People around me got money. But all of a sudden, this woman came in clearly on drugs, stank, didn't look right, didn't smell right, and wandered into my agency and looked at me and said, God told me to come in here. 
<laughs> I said, what do you need? She said, I need $20. I just need a place to stay. Uh, all the shelters are full. Well, my wife was in the back running her own office. And I was about to give her $20, but the spirit said, no, nope, go ahead and let your wife handle this one. So I called her out. I said, Tina, this woman asked for $20. Why don't you handle that? She looked at Tina and says, I need a place to stay. Something told me I'm supposed to come here. And Tina looked at her. And I don't know how she just pulled this faith out of nowhere, but she looked at that woman, looked her dead in her eyes, and said, do you believe that you're going to get a financial miracle today? Now, this is a homeless woman on drugs. We can tell. <laughs> but I guarantee she sobered up at that moment. She said, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Now, I kid you not, Tina took that woman in the back, and they began praying. I don't know what that woman's background was, but within a couple minutes, I heard my wife go into a different sound. She's praying with a homeless woman. All of a sudden, my wife is talking in tongues. About a minute later, I heard the homeless woman talking in tongues, too. Both of them had church in the state farm office. I was getting nervous. I was like, somebody locked the door. Don't let anybody. Customers come in here. They're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to report me. <laughs> They had church, and I heard the sound shift, and two people exalted God, and it went on for a while. I want to say it was like 20 minutes. They was having church back there. And then it quieted down, and Tina started making phone calls and found the lady a place to stay, and she ended up having a place to stay, I think it was for six weeks. She was on her way out the door, and she turned around, and she looked, and she said, you know what? And she seemed a lot more sober-minded. Let me stop here and talk about this for a moment. There was a time in the olden days, particularly here in the Kojic Church, where people could come to the altar, and there was a different level of expectation. And if they had an alcoholic problem, they didn't just get saved and then have to go to AA meetings, but the taste of that thing left them immediately. And they never went back to it because they got a touch from the Holy Ghost after they spoke and it was believed on them. There was a different potency that I remember growing up. I remember people that could get touched at the altar and put away drugs and never go back to it again. I remember people that could get touched at the altar and promiscuity just left their body and now they wanted to live holy for the remainder of their life. There is a potency based on the faith and your expectation. She turned around and said, Something crazy. She said, I think I have a lawyer. I was ready to send them back to the back so they could pray again. I said, the drugs done kicked back in. <laughs> Once again, my wife said, let's let, we, we promised her a financial miracle. Let's check this out. And so we started asking questions. We started making some phone calls. We reached what was probably the top lawyer in the city of Richmond. I had to see this for myself. I closed my office because as soon as he picked up the phone, the secretary picked up the phone, she transferred to him, and that man said, woman, I've been looking for you. I locked the doors. We all got in the car. We drove to the lawyer's office ourselves. I had to check this out for myself. We went upstairs to the top floor of a high building. This man had a penthouse for, a, for a, a lawyer's office. He came out the door and said, woman, I've been looking for you for years had an $18,000 check with her name on it, and she just sobered up 10 minutes ago. There was faith, and there was a sound, and I saw something that I wasn't ready to believe myself. I said, Lord, what are you telling me? He said, just believe, have faith in God, and speak to that mountain, and I will manifest in the physical right before your eyes what I've been waiting to do all the time. There are things that are unmanifest manifested in our lives because we've been speaking the wrong thing that we've been telling people I can't start this business right now I ain't got the right money God says I've been gave that thing to you sow your seed and believe and change what you say and I will manifest it in front of everybody so well, 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 I'm not smart enough for this. God said, I ain't call you based on how intelligent you are and I can alter that as well all you got to do is speak and believe 
and I will take what was in the spirit and manifest it in the reality. Hebrews 11 and 3 shows us that the spirit is greater than the physical. We spend so much time concentrating on the physical that we are diluting the spirit. We spend so much time learning about how to get our credit good. I used to teach all the way all over the place how to get my credit good. God made me stop teaching people how to get their credit good. And he said, watch, I'm going to start making all the people with bad credit millionaires. And I watched them all around my life. All my friends became millionaires. And they still got bad credit to this day. God says, oh, you've been concentrating on the wrong thing. There is a more potency in the spirit spiritual than there is a physical. The only reason I want you to understand the rules of the physical is so you can explain to people how I broke them. He will break the rules of your reality when you believe and speak that which he says. He says it and then you say it. Diastomas, two mouths. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear that sound on each and every one of you. Many of you here in this place right now, I hear the sound of power that has been unrealized. I see businesses that have not come into fruition. I see generational curses that were supposed to be broken a long time ago and turned into generational blessings. And God said, the only thing that is, is waiting on, because I finished it and sat down a long time ago, which is why it says Jesus is seated on the right hand of God. He said, I did my part. Now I'm just waiting on you to speak the same thing over your life that I already spoke to you and I will manifest it and everyone will see it for my glory. Speak that thing. And God says, I will make it real in your life. If you have faith in God, and speak to that mountain. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hope you guys have been blessed in the house today.